do wish that you could see some of those really cool futuristic interfaces without having to put on one of these things? Well, I can't help with that, but I can fake it inside of After Effects. Let's jump on in. We're gonna start with the heads up display shot. Like what you see when you put on one of those VR headsets. We can take the Apple Vision Pro as an example. All the windows and UI elements that you see, they act like they're in the real environment and that's why it's so cool. So let's show you how to create this. So I have my Premiere Pro project opened up here and after I activate my glasses, we cut to a shot filmed from my point of view. And here you'll see my hand popping up, interacting, to nothing. So let's right click on this shot and open it up in an After Effects composition. A new AE project will be created with the clip and it's ready to go. The first thing we need to do is 3D track, but don't worry, it's not as hard as it sounds. So you're going to select the video layer and add the 3D camera tracker effect. And it will immediately start to analyze the footage. And here we're using a free plugin called FX Console to quickly search and add effects to a selected layer. So that way you don't have to go to the effects panel to search for it. It just saves you a little bit of time. But if you don't have that, you can just go to the effects panel and search there. So once the tracker finishes analyzing here, we'll get a bunch of track points. What you're gonna do is just hover your mouse around it to find a combination of tracks track points that represent the ground best. If you can't find any or there aren't enough track points, what you can do is expand this advanced tab here and change the solve method or try turning on detailed analysis. Both of these methods can make your track better or worse depending on the footage. So try them out and hopefully it's for the best. For me, these points here stick to the ground pretty well. So let's right click and set ground plane and origin. And then we'll right click again and choose create solid and camera. This will give us a camera layer here. Basically, it's a virtual camera that mimics real camera's movement. And then the solid layer, don't worry, we're going to hide this later. Right now, it's just here to help us know where the ground is. And now we can bring in whatever elements we're using in our heads up display. Now this can be pre-made video overlays, it can be a PNG file, it can be an animation that you made yourself. In our case, we downloaded this elements pack from Envato and it came as an After Effects project file. So I'm going to drop this inside of my existing project panel here. And then you can find what element you want, like this mail widget. And I'm going to drag the mail pre comp into the timeline. And I can double click to go into this pre comp to edit the text as I see fit. So back inside of our main comp, let's make the mail layer 3D by hitting this button. Select our ground solid. Press P to open up the position properties. And then we can copy its position and paste it to the mail layer. This will move our mail UI to where the ground is in 3D space. So we can get a better sense of the space. We can change it to two views. And the left panel will show my 3D camera view. And on the right, it'll just be a custom view. So I can hold Alt or Option on a Mac and use my mouse to move around in 3D space without messing up my camera's position. Now I'll select the male layer. And this is cracking me up because I'm imagining it like a little ma a man on this layer. The male, like you've got mail layer and use this 3D gizmo to rotate it and move it up and closer to the camera, which is super neat. I love these controls. So think of this camera as me sitting there. It's my point of view. And we're basically putting and rearranging these 3D elements in my point of view. So what I've done here is I've added a few more of these UI elements to fill up our heads up display. Now remember that when you are recording this, plan ahead. Where are you going to look and where are you going to do the gestures? I recommend having a little bit more movement so that way you can place windows off screen and it'll look cooler like these objects are sticking to the ground and moving with your point of view. So just a reminder to plan ahead, fix it in pre rather than fixing it in post. Am I right? Hi, I'm a hat. I'm a part of the new merch collection. Go to the link below to check us out. <laughs> Now for this part where I had my hand up to press and swipe something away here, let's expand the mail layer, again, the mail layer and keyframe its scale. So what I want to do here is have it quickly scale down 
right when I do a pressing motion. So let's keyframe its position and have it move away along with my swipe. And also let's keyframe the opacity from 100 to zero towards the end of the swipe. So that way it just disappears. Now let's highlight all the keyframes and press F9 to apply an easy ease curve to make the animation smoother. I still need my hand to be on top of the UI and this calls for some rotoscoping. So what I'll do is I'll select the footage layer and hit Control D or Command D on a Mac to duplicate it and trim it to just the part where my hand comes in. Let's move this layer all the way to the top and double click to go into the layer tab. And here is where we'll use the Roto Brush tool to mask my hand out. So hold Alt to remove the stuff from the mask that you don't want. So once you're done, don't forget to freeze the Roto to lock in this result. And since my hand is kind of out of focus, I'm going to bump up the feathering of the mask and effect controls. So back in the comp tab here, my hand is finally on top of our animation. Now we're pretty much done here, but if you remember from the intro, we had that kind of quick scan in the beginning. So how did we do this? We created a new solid here and let's add grid effects to this solid. Now let's create a mask and keyframe it to move from one side to the other. Let's right click and pre-comp this layer and make sure to move all the attributes to the new composition. So make this comp 3D and now we can resize and move the grid comp to fill up the floor. And we can add a radial fast blur effect to it and change the blending mode to overlay and voila. <laughs> Bless you. For some finishing touches, you can press Control Alt Y or Command Option Y to create a new adjustment layer on top of everything. And here we can apply an optic compensation effect to it. And we can use this to distort the edges to get that kind of cool screen curvy look. And finally, don't forget to enable motion blur on all of these layers. And then we can add some cool sound design. And this is what we got. So with this trick, we can add as many different floating UI elements as we want to, right? But creating them from scratch can take a long time. And that's why we chose to use this pack from Envato. From their library, I can search for pre-made AR and VR elements, and I get a bunch of results to choose from. These modern looking phone widgets also look pretty nice here. Or I can be Iron Gal and use these really cool futuristic heads up display elements. I also like that a lot of these elements are already in video form so I can just quickly apply them to videos as overlays and change the blend mode. Or if I'm feeling a little bit adventurous, I can search their After Effects templates and download and customize them to my liking. And this is just a tiny little fraction of what you get with an Envato Elements subscription. You get unlimited access to stock footage, sound effects, photos, fonts, and graphics templates. And the best part is, is even though it's subscription, when you download an asset for a project, you get a lifetime commercial license. You can use my link below if you wanna try it out. Thanks to Envato for sponsoring this video. And now let's get on to some AR effects. So augmented reality is a technology that combines digital information with the real world, or as we like to call it, making sick graphics a part of the environment. And it works best with POV point of view footage of a person walking because it really sells the shot to see the animation passing by us when the person is walking. In After Effects, we're going to be using the same techniques as the last example. So start by 3D tracking the footage and I'm going to use these points to create my ground solid. But for this shot, I need to create a solid for all the different locations of where I wanna put these AR elements. So for example, I plan on having a search button pop up on the tree here. So this will help us place these graphics in 3D space and have it stay glued on the object that we're putting it on. So we're gonna start with adding arrows on the ground so we know where to go, of course. And I downloaded a video of these animating arrows on a black background from Envato. So let's plop it in the timeline and let's make the layer 3D, then press F4 again to see the blending mode options and change it to screen to get rid of the black. So then we can copy the position from our ground solid to the arrow layer. And now you can move and rotate it to fit 
this walking trail. So for the tree, we made this simple animation using basic shape and text layers in After Effects. And I also timed the animation to reveal the search result right when I do the pressing motion with my finger. And now let's pre-comp all these layers and make it 3D. So then we go to our tree solid to copy its position over to my pre-comp. And let's move this layer up to the tree and line up the icon to where my finger presses. So I'm going to use two views again to make sure I don't move this layer backwards or forward because don't forget the tree solid is where our real tree is in 3D space. If we move it away, the animation isn't gonna stick to the tree anymore. So once I have it in a good spot, I can press Y and move the anchor point to the starting dot here. And that way I can keyframe the scale to have it animate out from the tree. And let's also add a quick scale down animation when I press on the icon. Let's copy these keyframes to when I do a pressing motion a second time. And I'll use the second press as a point where my animation gets disconnected from the tree and I'll have it stick to my fingers instead. So let's keyframe the position to have it follow my fingers movement until I swipe it off the frame. So now I can duplicate the footage and mask out my hand with the roto brush tool, just like we did before. So that way the hand is on top of the graphics. Using this exact same method, we can add more movement to the environment, like adding a grass detector on the grass. I was hoping that there would be another object here when I was just improving this moment, but there was nothing, so I downloaded this radar screen footage from Envato, and all I did was mask out the circular radar part and place this down in the corner, and I changed the blend mode to screen. And this layer isn't tracked to anything, it's just there as like a example mini map to go along with kind of the navigation of the scene. So to finish this off, let's create an adjustment layer and use the optic compensation again. And I'll also add some lens blur to the same layer. And we can create a circle mask around my footage. And down in the timeline, let's expand the layer properties and under the lens blur effect compositing options, let's press the plus button. So the mask will only affect our blur. Let's click this to invert the mask so we only blur the edges. So we can bump up the mask feathering to smooth in that transition between the blur and the non-blurred areas. So with a basic knowledge of 3D tracking and 3D objects, you can really add anything you want to your scenes for a variety of different effects. If you're ready to jump into something a little bit more complex in the world of 3D, you should definitely check out this video. That's all for this video. And as always, keep creating better video with a gal. See you next time. Bye. Ooh.